Welcome everyone. Um, today's presentation, Top 10 Interviewing Tips, is presented by our very own Jim Langang. He is a brother from Truman State, which is in Missouri. Um, I own a new chapter. He was actually on our central office staff. He was an educational and leadership consultant from 1992 to 1994. But today he is presenting Top Interviewing Tips. He has been in the staffing recruiting industry for the last 24 years and is locally and nationally recognized as one of our top account managers and an expert in interviewing. So Jim, take it away. Well, thank you, Heather. And I found out Heather was from Alpha Chi Chapter, Washington University in St. Louis. And I had the pleasure of serving as district director for them after I worked for the fraternity. So um and I want this to be interactive. I, I could talk for the whole hour. I promise you that. Um, but I would love questions. And Heather, if there are questions, can you kindly read those for me? Um, but thanks, everyone. I work for Strategic Staffing Solutions now. Um, I'm based in St. Louis. And our company is actually an international staffing and business services company. One of the things that I do as part of my job is actually help people get prepared for interviews. So Heather and uh, a longtime friend, Ms. Shanda Gray, actually asked me if I would give this presentation again, and, and, and I'm honored to. So um, S3 is a Detroit-based, woman-owned, military-friendly company. So you see some of the things that, that we've got here um, as some, some of the certifications. Uh, we're part of the Hiring 5,000 Heroes programs as well. I love to bring that up and any kind of veterans, we love helping either hire internally within our company or for one of our customers. So let me back up. Um, any of you heard the term like headhunter or recruiter or account manager or anything like that? That's, you can, I've been called it all. Uh, ultimately our customers pay our firm to help hire some of the best people out there. So once we have identified that someone is a really good candidate, then I partner with them to try to get them to interview better. So if you wanna land that dream job, take a few notes. If you learn a couple things from this presentation, awesome. Feel free to call me later on. I am happy to help out, especially any kind of brother, okay? And as Heather said, so back a long time ago, uh, I pledged Delta SIG in 1989. I've been to a handful of awesome Grand Chapter Congresses. I've met people from around the country, around the world. Really though, this presentation though, is really about you and how we give back and the service that we do for the fraternity, okay? So thank you first off for your time. This picture is actually from Detroit um, and it's where our headquarters is. So I like it, it's pretty cool. But again, thank you. First tip. And let me rearrange a few things here. Can you all see that up top, top 10 interviewing tips? Oops. So show your enthusiasm and smile. I cannot stress that enough. Um, usually I will say there's three main things that need to be displayed during an interview. One is your willingness to do the job. Second, your ability to do the job. And third is, that they trust you or a level of trust. Um, showing your enthusiasm and smiling. In fact, um, there was a long time Delta SIG that when I was training to become a chapter consultant or edu educational consultant, uh, educational leadership consultant, uh, Dean wrote me this little note, Dean Ferguson, and he said, a smile is contagious. That was about 30 years ago and I never forget it. So again, you wanna make a good first impression, um, maybe how you dress, it may be your smile, be prepared. And by the way, if it is only audio with a lot of the, the interviews nowadays, I would still encourage dress nicely because you never know. We had a customer one time say, oh, um, you know, can you put the video on? We just wanna make sure that you are who you are. And so sometimes you need to be prepared, whether it's, just audio, or if it is video as well, or you know, uh, when we get past the pandemic, uh, the pandemic here, you're going to have to probably dress up, look nice anyway. And one of the cool things that we did at Iota New um, or Truman State University, we did dress for success. 
So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. But again, show your enthusiasm and smile, look nice. Okay, any questions there? All make sense? Secondly, uh, I cannot tell you how many times that throughout this pandemic that I've had individuals representing our company and themselves, and they go a minute or two before the interview and they have not even checked their technology. For example, one of our customers is a large utility in St. Louis, and we do a lot of digital or IT hiring for them. And we had a longtime Windows specialist that we were interviewing. He could not get his team's software to work, at least the, the video portion of it. Not a good first impression at all. So again, I would recommend the day before or even a couple of days before, test out the link that you may get. If you get a link from uh, the, the interviewer, test it out, okay? And I mean, here's another example. We actually had a person interview for us that the team software he was familiar with and he went and clicked the link. He was using a home laptop, not his, his, his work laptop. He was using a home laptop and his wife had configured the settings for the audio to go through her Bluetooth. So his audio was not working when we actually tested it. So luckily uh, he figured it out, talked with his wife and that night they uh, tested it out and everything went smoothly. So again, test your technology before the interview, okay? So that's the software, the video, the audio, and, and also the lighting. So you know, don't underestimate the lighting of it. Um, we've had some candidates, they'll have um, the shades open or the blinds open, and it's so bright, you can't even see them. And or the opposite, where it's so dark, I can't even see who they are. So again, test it out, test the lighting, your framing and all that, okay? So I'm gonna pause. Any questions about the first two tips? And Heather, can you tell me if there are either that or just unmute and just ask the, uh, ask the questions, okay? I, again, wanna make this interactive. We don't have any in the chat yet, but if anybody has one, go ahead and type it in or just unmute yourself like Jim said. The other thing is log in 15 to 20 minutes early. Just like what you would do if you were driving to an interview, you probably wanna log in a little bit early just to make sure, hey, everything's good. Um, we've had customers join interviews five to 10 minutes early because the individual's on and know that that team software, if you have it, um, it'll pop up and give you a, oh, hey, someone is, is, in, uh, is in the queue. So you can sometimes get started early, okay? So last, last little bullet on this slide was, you know, it has to do with testing the technology, but really it's, if it is in person, I would drive by to that physical office the day before. You may not go in, but drive by there. See where you're gonna park, see where the entrance is to the building so that you're very familiar with it, okay? And, and do all the little things, you know, if, check the weather. If it's going to rain, um, grab an umbrella. We, we had a young man, I'm not kidding you, it was pouring out raining and he couldn't find a close parking spot. So he comes in, he is soaked because uh, he had to walk about 10 minutes, did not have an umbrella. So again, drive by, be prepared. This may be my absolute favorite slide and the number one thing that you can learn, okay? So you know, ask good questions, demonstrate your analysis skills, but really know what you wanna sell by asking these great questions. So Heather, you didn't realize this, but I'm gonna put you on the spot, okay? So Heather, have you ever bought a car or a house? Actually, we just moved into a new house. <laughs> okay, what did you like about the house, Miss Heather? Um, it was a brand new build. So actually we custom built it. <laughs> so that's the best part about it is it's all everything we wanted. Is it in Oxford? Is it in Cincinnati or are y'all? No, where's I, the location? I actually live about 45 minutes from Oxford. So it's in Germantown, Ohio, little town. Yeah, but you like the town as well? Yes, it's very homey. <laughs> 
Okay. And, and is the custom build, do you have a two car garage or something like that? Do you have a garage in there? How's yes, the, is it, we, isn't it open for you so you can, uh, so you can have social parties and all that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you're buying a house and you go meet with a real estate agent, or if you're going to buy a car and, and you go and the first thing out of that real estate agent or out of the car dealership is, hey, look at this great house, Heather. It's 40 years old, but they fixed it up. It is what it is. There's no garage in there. But boy, look at all that space you got. And, and or if you're going to buy a car and you really want a minivan. So here's an example. When my wife and I uh, first had our, our youngest son 17 years ago. Um, we had a little two-door car and uh, we were going to get a minivan. Yes, we've owned minivans. And we went into the dealership. And if that car dealer would have started selling us on, you know, here's a great motorcycle, here's a Ford Mustang, it's convertible, it's fast, um, or here's a nice truck. Point is, is if a salesperson starts selling you on something, it's, it's too late, right? You're probably going to tune out that salesperson. So if the real estate agent, Heather, that you were working with started trying to sell you on a bunch of houses and you're like, no, we want to custom build. The point about asking these questions is trying to find out in the beginning what the buyer wants to buy. And, and this is absolutely probably my number one overall tip. And I save it for number three. But anyway, um, as you're interviewing, you want to try to find a way to ask these two questions. What are the top two to three most critical skills you're seeking in a successful candidate? And you're asking this. You are asking this to the person who's interviewing you. And, and what are the top two to three most important responsibilities in this role? Top two questions. The other key, this is when you ask this, it's got to be in the beginning of the interview. And I know for some of you people, that's going to scare the hell out of you because you don't even want to talk sometimes, right? You're scared, which is normal. So I think one of the best times, one of the best um, deliveries of these two questions is right after your introduction. Okay, so my introduction, if I was ever interviewing, and I have not interviewed in 25 years, um, but I've prepped probably about 10,000 people on how to interview. But my introduction would be something like this. My name is Jim Langang. I'm with S3 of Strategic Staffing Solutions. I've been an account manager for the last 24 and a half years. I'm here in St. Louis, and my specialty is digital or IT candidates. One highlight about me is that I currently have helped a local utility in St. Louis hire over 175 people in the last three years. And currently we have 80 consultants on site or working virtually for this customer. But before we go into my background, Heather, if you were interviewing me or Anna or Jake, before we go into that, and in a lot more detail about my background, would you kindly share the top two to three most critical skills and the top two to three most important responsibilities of this position? And, and what you want them to do is draw you a roadmap of what they wanna hear or what they wanna buy, right? If Heather said, gosh, I really want a custom built house. I want it in a nice hometown like Germantown. I want it to be, you know, it's got to be within an hour of the central office of Oxford, Ohio. I'm not driving two hours to, to the central office, right? I know that, you know, I'm going to have to drive in. And so I want a good location. If, if the buyer tells you what they want to buy, that's half the battle of an interview. Okay. Does that make sense? Anna, Jake, and everyone else on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, so that may be like the number one tip that I can share with you um, is, is really know what you want to sell about your background by asking these questions. If they say, so uh, Jake, for example, what are you studying, Jake? 
Um, I actually just recently graduated in June um, with information systems degree. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of information, so what kind of jobs are you looking at then? Um, I actually just had an interview today um, for a construction company. Um, it was for a position accounts payable specialist. Um, and I know I didn't graduate with accounting, but I made it like, I was just honest and told them that I'm open to any opportunity because I, I didn't have any internship experience because of COVID kind of limited my options. Um, so I really don't know what I don't want to do. So I'm open to any opportunity. Well, send me your resume after this anyway, Jake. Um, if you're in California, I got a lot of good friends out there. We, we help out a really big bank uh, in the Bay Area and a really large oil company that has a lot of offices in California as well. They're not me personally, but um, if you're looking at like an information systems job, so that's on the site. But Jake, if you were interviewing for, for an IT job per se, right, or a digital job, you would really want to ask them, you know, a little bit more or about the account uh, specialist role, the accounting role, a little bit more about what are, you know, what are the top two to three things most important about this job and what are the main skills you're looking for? Because, you know, frankly, um, I get job descriptions from customers that are whole page. <laughs> I'm like, okay, in IT, you're lucky if you get two to three, what are those main skills that you're looking for, right? Yeah. So you know, I hope that helps here, Jake. Um, any questions about this? And, and when you interview it next time, I would really encourage, these are two of the best introductory questions that you're going to find when you're interviewing, okay? Awesome. Thank you. And uh, will you leave your contact information at the end of the presentation? Absolutely. And I'm sure Heather will do it for us as well. She's got all that, my email, my phone number, you name it. Okay, Jake? Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, okay, well, back on number three. So again, know what you want to sell by asking these questions. Build a rapport and, and a connection with the interviews. Yeah, obviously, you know, that this, this cannot be said enough here. If you see on their LinkedIn profile that they were a member of Delta Sigma Pi, uh, St. Louis alumni chapter like me, those are some questions. Oh, hey, I, you know, what chapter were you in? And you can make a connection there. Or I love looking to see what they volunteer in. So our company is very big into community uh, efforts. So in St. Louis, there is a homeless shelter called St. Patrick Center. And our company and several customers in St. Louis, they actually sponsor the Veterans Day race as about 25% of their clients, the homeless clients, are veterans. And, and so they sponsor this Veterans Day race. And if someone saw that I volunteer for that on my LinkedIn and they asked me about it, instant connection, right? Or that they're a veteran or that they volunteer for other charities. Um, but then I'd, I'd ask them, feel free to ask them, you know, what do you like about the company? Um, why is it, you know, I, I see that you volunteer with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Why is that? Um, and, and how does your company feel about that? Okay. So again, that's number four, build a rapport and a connection with the interviewers. Number five, uh, really that this, number five and number six go together. It's really about being prepared. So you know, be prepared and be honest. Uh, I, I would always encourage, if you see where it says, uh, do your homework and write out your top seven accomplishments. Oops. Ask yourself these questions, Jake or Anna or anyone else that's on here. And whether you're a recent graduate, whether you've worked for five, 10 years or not, think about whether it was maybe an internship, how did you stand out? How did you ever save them time or money? Um, maybe you won an award in college. These are some of the top accomplishments, right? Um, and, and for people that have been working, I, I get all the time, I, someone will say, well, why is this person so good? Oh, they have seven years of writing web software development. I'm like, I don't really care. Five years, seven years. What have they done? Tell me how they have, have uh, stood out. So those are some of the things that you really want to do your homework on ahead of time, right? So I would always encourage, write out your top seven accomplishments ahead of time. 
any questions on this one about you know working on on your accomplishments um, and, and at least knowing those okay number six so all these kind of tie together y'all okay so if you find out from the interviewer about certain uh, pieces that are important to them in the beginning of the interview these are some of the things that you can talk about some of the examples by doing your homework uh, these are some of the pieces throughout the interview that you can really talk about so let me just ask first off though who can tell me what star stands for um, within either presentations or within the interviewing world anyone know what star stands for Okay, I'll give it to you. It's an acronym for situation, task, actions, and results. Again, situation, task, actions, and results. So if I was interviewing at the central office and I wanted to get my old job back and I'm like, please hire me, um, if they ask a question to me, and really a lot of these are your behavioral interview questions nowadays, you know, describe a situation when you've had to say no. Describe a situation when you've built relationships. And, and I get it. Some of y'all don't have work life experience, but maybe this is directly from college. Um, how have you brought innovation? These could be from an internship, it could be from an organization like Delta SIG. Maybe it's an example that you can highlight. Uh, you were vice president of, do they still call it pledge education or member education? How do they say that, Heather? It's still pledge education. Okay. So if you've taken a leadership role, these are all things that you could talk about. Um, but ahead of time, I would be prepared. Um, and, and Heather, you're more than welcome to share this if you want. But these seven questions, um, and there's probably a hundred different behavioral interview questions out there. All you got to do is Google it. But I would encourage having a star example, situation, task, action, and result ready to go that you can talk about. So here's an example. So uh, I work with a, a utility customer in St. Louis that they're implementing Workday. And Workday is a, a new cloud software that includes HR and payroll and, and a lot of different functions. Um, HR and payroll data is highly sensitive, right? So if you've worked on software like that, you could describe the situation. Maybe you help implement Workday, or maybe it was a PeopleSoft or another kind of software that's, or maybe you just dealt with highly sensitive uh, information. So maybe it was um, if you were the president of Delta C at a particular chapter and you had some member challenges, right? And, and no chapter's perfect. Um, but if you had some member challenges, these are things, they're great learning opportunities. And, and you could really highlight here was the situation and be very specific. Here was the situation. Here were my tasks. Here was the actions that we took. And here was the end result. And the end result actually should go back to maybe how you've saved time or saved money, or maybe it's you improve uh, overall um, customer service. Or maybe if any of you were in the recruiting or, or what, what, do, what do chapters call nowadays? Uh, like you have a, a vice president of recruiting or vice president of recruitment, or, or as you're recruiting new members to join your chapter, um, if you helped increase the number of members, uh, and maybe you were the vice president of, of recruiting and you went from 50 members up to 60 members and you initiated uh, 10 new brothers, that's, that's actually a heck of an accomplishment. So I would be looking at things like those if you're in or looking to get into sales or recruiting um, those are just great examples that you can talk about, okay? So the bottom line is, is it's really being prepared and having specific examples that you can talk about. Now, frankly, team and, and, and brothers, uh, I really sucked it on an interview. Um, I remember getting late to an interview for the Fed. I couldn't find parking on campus. 
I had every excuse in the world and I certainly wasn't prepared. Guess who did not get an offer from the Fed? Jim Langang. Thankfully, I got an offer from the central office. And I have a true story. Um, I was a lot better interviewing for that position than I did with the Fed. Uh, but I don't think I did any of this. I sure as heck didn't prepare nearly as well as what I should have. Um, but these seven questions and probably another hundred out there, Google them, practice them. Um, call up uh, your best friend, your little brother, your big brother in the fraternity. Um, maybe it's a, a parent, a brother, and, and have them ask you these questions and practice them, okay? Are we all good on, on having some examples ready to discuss? Does, does that all make sense? Okay, thanks, Jake. So get this, um, I went over this with a candidate about three weeks ago. And I said, have some examples, prepare them if you wanna practice with me, because if, if she got hired, I, I would um, increase my own revenue and, and uh, my commissions and, and uh, let's just say my, my paycheck. And you know the feedback from the customer? Three weeks ago, it's a buddy of mine. He calls me up and says, hey, Jim, think, you know, we hired the one from you, but the other one, I don't get it. They, I'd ask them questions like these and they couldn't tell me an example. They could not specifically tell me an example. And I was like, I'm sorry, Court. I really, <laughs> no, it's not that I didn't at least try, you know, but I, I, I couldn't interview uh, for this role. It was, it was really, you know, helping this individual out. So have some examples. And, and again, um, think about some of these questions. How have I saved time? How have I stood out? Those all help you be better prepared. In fact, Back uh, when I was interviewing, I'm sure I spent 90% of the time trying to memorize the gross annual revenue for a company, um, the history of the firm, any person there. That didn't help. I should have spent about half the time preparing myself and writing out some accomplishments. Okay. Number seven. Sometimes uh, I'm on one side of this. Um, think about, you know, checking yourself out and, and even asking a friend, you know, do I need to elaborate on my answers or do I need to talk a little bit less? And one way you can do that for an interview question, and, and again, plan out your answers, write them out, um, practice them, but at the end of, of each answer, sometimes I like to ask the question, would you like more details? And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're gonna go, hey, Jim, you talked about working for GE Capital back, you know, that was what, 26 years ago. Tell me a little bit more when you were an investor reporter. And, and sometimes, you know, they'll ask some additional ones, but sometimes uh, you'll quickly find out you know, maybe I've talked for two minutes or so. Maybe, maybe I just, I need to cut back here. But again, did I share enough details? Um, and, and again, practice these ahead of time. Number eight, real simple, take some notes. Jake, when you interviewed, did you write down uh, the interviewer's names when you interviewed uh, today for that position? Uh, no, I didn't. I remember it though, so. <laughs> Okay, and some people remember, and, and I can't tell someone who's audio um, to, you know, to, to remember to write it down, um, but I would write every name down of the interviewer. And, and can someone tell me why we wanna write down the interviewer's names or that you remember it? So that way we can uh, thank them in an email later for their time. And you can use their names throughout the interview. You know, Jake, uh, one part of my background is this. So using their first name helps build that rapport, right? And that was one of the previous uh, interview tips. But absolutely, I am amazed. In fact, I read an article and it was something to the extent of never make an offer when someone does not send a thank you. So take notes. And, and remember those questions in the beginning? I'm going to go back to it, but I'm going to come back to this slide. Remember tip number three, ask great questions. 
when you ask those questions, write the answers down, okay? Um, and, and really those should give you some ideas on some of your examples that you wanna talk about. So again, um, take some notes. You got a nice little notebook handy or something like that. I'm trying to show it to you virtually. Uh, this is a nice one that I know my company actually gives out. It's a, it's a nice professional looking one. It's got a little binder on everything, but um, take some notes, okay? Um, in fact, I love at the beginning, sometimes I'm gonna say, do you mind if I take notes? That's normally if you're in person, right? And that way then you can even open up your notebook and start taking some notes. Um, questions? Okay. Nope. Number nine, okay. So in the beginning of the interview, we talk about uh, how to set up the stage, how to ask the right questions. At the end of an interview, and please do not wait to the end of an interview to ask those two best questions I shared with you, because at that point, uh, it's a little bit late, right? Um, at the end of an interview, I wanna close the deal. Right, and in fact, we have a little saying, ABCs of interviewing, always be closing, ABCs. So closing the deal, or at the end of an interview, say something like, thank you. This has been awesome. This has been great. Use their words, their terminology. Um, one closing question would be, is there anything else I can share with you about my qualifications that will make you feel comfortable about bringing me on board or make me an offer? Or what are the next steps in the timeline? Jake, I'm going to pick on you again. Did you ask any of these questions during your interview today? Um, not that I can think of, no. <laughs> I kind of got lost in thought and kind of went on autopilot. I might have, but I don't remember. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay, Brother Jake. Hey, I bet that next one, you're going to nail it if you don't get this offer, right? Yeah. So these, again, closing the deal, this is at the end of an interview. It's like um, watching a movie or, or reading a book. In the beginning, you better have a little pizzazz. For me, I love seeing a car chase or something, something in the beginning of a movie, Fast and Furious. It's something. You know there's going to be some sort of car chase, right? Um, at the end of it, same thing something's gonna blow up, you know, good guy's gonna win, hopefully, or gal, um, but close the deal at the end. Um, if, if I'm reading a book, and, and I love Tom Clancy novels personally, at the end of a Tom Clancy novel, my gosh, there's so much drama and this character's going on in this. So again, just like a, a movie or a book, close it at the end, okay? So I look at, at an interview, usually it has three main pieces. That's the beginning. You got the body of the interview and then you got the end of the interview. And if you're interested in this role, Jake or Anna or anyone, you want to let them know, gosh, you know, I love the fact that you guys are involved in the community. I think the role is a great fit. Is there anything else that I can share with you about my background that uh, you have any other questions? And if they do, hint, hint. If they do say, well, Jake, I was really hoping you had a little more finance experience. <laughs> That's, you, you, got, you got a little window to try to still close it, okay? If they do mention anything. But at the very least, you come out of it and, and the other side knows you're willing to do this job. You're interested in it, right? Because frankly, if they don't offer you the job, it doesn't matter if you want the job or not. If they don't want you, it, it, it's, it, it's over. So, you know, a good problem would be to have multiple offers, right? And, and Jake and Anna and anyone that's on this, there's 10.1 million openings right now. 10.1, the IT industry alone is grown, and I think it's like 6 million professionals, and they're going to add another couple hundred thousand. It's just it's, it's, it's crazy. It is what we call a candidate driven market right now. So if you're not in, in a position right now and, and maybe a little bit less experienced, 
Um, but your, your time will come. I promise you that is there's so many great jobs out there and you just got to really be looking at them. So again, going back to number nine, close the deal. Number 10, and Jake said it earlier, here you go, send a nice thank you. And check your grammar and spelling. Uh, so true story, about 20 years ago, there was a customer in St. Louis and I had a person interview and I asked the candidate, give me a call afterwards. And he didn't, he wasn't listening. And he sent a thank you right away to the customer. Guess what he did not do though? He didn't check his grammar or spelling so well. Um, I got an earful on that one. And you know what the customer actually called and said? Hey, Jim, I was about ready to make an offer to that person. I almost called you up to say, I want to hire that person. And I said, well, what happened? He goes, I got this thank you. And there was about seven misspellings or grammar mistakes. And actually, I, I said, you know what? I bet he was in a hurry. Let me find out. And I actually did three references on him and asked specifically to the companies that he had worked for. How was his written communication? And they said it was fantastic. No worries. Have If you got a customer who's looking at him, have him call me. And I saved it. And he ended up getting the offer and got the job. And he stayed there a few years. So anyway, the point being is check your spelling, check your grammar, check, you know, check the thank you. And nowadays, I mean, I know it's easy to send electronic thank you. I get it. If you really want the job and you haven't heard from them, guess what? Snail mail, baby. Um, can write a thank you. Hopefully they can read it. Drop it in the mail. I collected every single one that I ever got. And I think I only got about five handwritten thank yous. True story. Couldn't believe it. I get a lot of emails nowadays. I probably get about 300 emails a day at least. Um, so if you really want to stand out, write a nice handwritten one. The challenge with that, though, I, I will be upfront, is you don't normally have their address. So I don't know, that, that's a hard one. Sometimes you're, you're sending it to the company. And I think we're going to get out of the pandemic and people are going to be going back in the office or at least more on a hybrid basis. So they'll eventually get it. But that will stand out. I promise you a handwritten thank you is, is rare in the industry right now.